June twentieth meeting of the planning commission. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the secretary please take roll? David Franz, present. Jim Hurst, present. Mary Grabanowski, present. Larry Jones, present. Cindy Madrick, present. Chris Lake, I was reminded he's going to miss this meeting. Absent. And Sharon Walker, present. All right, so that's six people, a vote of four will be required to move anything forward. Um, in your minutes, there's a packet of the for the May minute. In your packet, there's a in your packet, there is the minutes from the May meeting. Is there any comments, additions, deletions to those minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. She carries and minutes are approved. There's no continued business, so on to new business. Um, docket number 2023-17RP. Uh, Windy Hills Farms LLC promontory replat of lots A17 and A18, 1870 and 1910 Windy Hills Drive, Zionsville. Petition for approval of the replat to combine lots A17 and A18 in promontory section 18 being in the planned unit development promontory PUD district. Is the petitioner present? Or no, start with the uh, Roger, you handling it? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. As mentioned, this is petition uh, number 202317RP, a replant of uh, lots A17 and A18 of section 1B of promontory. Uh, the intent of this replant is to combine the two lots into a single lot. You'll direct your attention to the screens. Uh, first of all, I have a location map uh, showing the northern border of the um, parcel of promontory, promontory is County Road 200 North, along through here with Michigan Road off to the west. Uh, this western portion that comes out to Michigan Road is known as Section 1B. The property is zoned PUD, it is part of the promontory PUD. Forward. This is the recorded secondary plat of section 1B. Uh, I've outlined the, the involved lots, lots A17 and A18 in red up in this area. Again, section 1A is this area that uh, extends over to County Road 1000 East. Moving on, uh, just an enlargement of, again, sections for lots A17 and A18. These are the two lots that would be combined into one. This is a drawing of the proposed replat, which would combine those two lots. Uh, and again, the, this petition uh, requests to vacate the shared property line, which extends through here, uh, and combine the two lots into a single lot. There are no easements uh, involved in the vacation or removal of this lot line. So it is truly just a merging of the two lots to be combined into one. Staff recommends approval of the uh, of petition 202317-RP. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. Is the petitioner present? Are they online? Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi there, thank you for your time. Peyton Long with Hinky Development Group. Um, as Roger just mentioned, he's exactly right on with that presentation uh, with the combine of A18 and 17, just to vacate that lot line. So happy to answer any questions if there are any. All right, thank you. Is there anybody you'd like to speak on this matter? Being none, I'll open it up to members of the Planning Commission for any questions, comments. How do the uh, front and back building set lines 
building setback lines then get established? Do they follow per what was previously approved for each individual lot? Yes, that's correct. Would be the 150 foot off of the front setback there, and then also the 150 foot rear uh, rear setback as well. And then because of the, isn't there a regulated drain that runs through this property? Um, I'm not, I can't, yeah, on the east side there is. Sorry about that. Any other questions, comments? If not, is there a motion on this matter? I move to approve petition number 2023-17-RP, a replat to allow for the vacation of the shared property line of lots A-17 and A-18 in section 1B of promontory, resulting in the two lots being combined into a single parcel in the planned unit development zoning district be approved based on based the, based on the filing and present presented information, the filed and presented information, and the findings established at the public hearings. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion comments? Mm -hmm. If not, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Motion carries six zero. It's approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. On the docket, I'll read these two together. Docket's uh, number 202318PP, uh, PLD and Browning Ventures LLC, Park 267 Primary Plat, and 2023-19PP, PLD, same petitioner, um, both at 5190 South State Road 267 Lebanon. With the primary uh, petition for approval of the primary plat to establish a single lot of 76.12 plus minus acres with ROW de dedications being right away dedications being zoned rural light industrial rural I1 and a petition for development plan approval of a 1,100,000 square foot industrial building on 76.12 plus minus acres lot being zoned rural light industrial rural R I1. Roger, you have it, listen. All right, please proceed. Thank you. As mentioned, um, we're going to cover two companion petitions here at the same time, 2023-18 um, PP for the primary plat and 2023-19 DP for the development plan of the proposed warehouse distribution facility. Uh, on, the, on the screen, I have the location map uh, identifying the subject site. Uh, north is to the, to the top of the screen. Uh, along the eastern edge of the site is State Road 267. Coming down to uh, the southern portion of the site, it is bordered by County Road 550 South, uh, and then extends up. And, and again, this entire site area is approximately 72, I'm sorry, 76.12 acres. Uh, the primary plat seeks to combine three parcels into a single lot with three parcels. Uh, here's one, here's two, here's the third. Uh, and again, they're looking to combine those two into a single platted lot for the development uh, for the warehouse uh, facility. Uh, included within the primary plat petition is the dedication of right-of-way to allow for the widening along State Road 267. There would be right-of-way dedicated along this area and also the widening of County Road 550 South. So there, there is on the uh, proposed primary plat dedication of right-of-way in this area as well. Subject site is zoned I-1 rural, uh, as are the pro properties immediately to the east of the site and to the west, uh, to the north. Um, we have one area that is under White Sound's jurisdiction. It has an industrial uh, zoning classification. Uh, the um, extreme northeastern corner of the site 
does border Zinesville jurisdiction, which is zoned ag. The south of, of the site, we have uh, ag zoned uh, along this section of 550 South. And then on the south side of 550 South, it's all ag as well. This is a drawing representing the primary plat. Uh, the orientation is now north to the right of the screen. Uh, so for your purposes, State Road 267 is along this side with County Road 550 in this area. Uh, this, this plat is, uh, has overlaid on it the site layout for the proposed building. Um, which I'll go ahead and move to the site plan, which kind of cleans that up a little bit. It's a little easier to see. The site plan, beginning with the vehicular um, access to the site, there are two points of access, both from 267. The primary point of entry is uh, approximately midway along the site. Again, 267 is in this location. This would be a full uh, entry access. The second vehicular access is here on the north end of the site, it would be a right in, right out only. Um, uh, surrounding the building uh, is, is an interior access drive, which uh, would be accessed by the, the trailers. Um, go back to my notes so I don't get lost. Um, at the two entry points, uh, there is a proposed monument sign at each location, one here, and one here, and, and you'll see the proposed monument sign later in the presentation. Um, even though the lot will have frontage on 550 South, uh, there are no points of vehicular access proposed for this frontage. The site is uh, uh, regarding drainage for the site. There are three uh, designed wet ponds, pond one in this area, pond two, and then pond three, there is an area to the north of the, of the building, which is uh, kind of a, a relief basin for um, should there be emergency flooding or overflows, uh, it would be used there. But this is primarily going to be uh, designed as a dry area. Uh, the site is impacted by a legal drain that comes across the northwestern corner of the site. That did go before the uh, Boone County Drainage Board yesterday morning uh, for uh, approval to relocate that drain. That relocation was approved by, by the Drainage Board. Uh, the development plan uh, includes two types of parking for, ve for vehicles and trailers. Uh, the currently proposed parking and then future parking. Uh, currently proposed plan includes 353 parking spaces for vehicles primarily located on the north in this area and on the south ends of the building. Um, currently proposed plan also includes 100 spaces for trailers equally distributed on the east and west sides of the building. Uh, so we've got 50 spots in this area and 50 spots in this area. Areas for future parking include 132 vehicular spaces and an additional 140 trailer spaces. Excuse me. The future spaces are located, future vehicular spaces are located in this area and in this area. And the future trailer parking spaces are located here and in this area. While these are not uh, planned to be developed at, at immediately with the initial build, um, they are planned and we're including them as part of the development plan, along with any landscaping that would be required to be installed when these parking areas are improved. Uh, so just making that clear that when it is decided that uh, the, the tenant needs to or desires to add these additional parking spaces, whether it be for vehicles or whether it be for trailers, uh, the required landscaping will be required to be added for those parking areas at that time. And it will not be required to come back for development plan amendment or anything like that. We're trying to cover that in this petition. The proposed improvements, uh, specifically the building itself, uh, it will utilize a variety of materials and colors. Uh, some of the details of this are provided within your packet as a part of Exhibit 4. 
The primary exterior building material will be precast concrete panels, uh, including some reveals. These panels will be painted utilizing three different colors. Storefront features, um, and I'm gonna move forward to some of the elevation drawings here. Um, sorry for if they're difficult to see, but this is the north elevation, uh, which would uh, does not include any any loading or dock bays, just as the south elevation does not include any of those as well. There are some storefront features on the corners um, where some office spaces may be located, uh, and this breaks up the facade elevation somewhat. The east elevation and the east elevation is, is comprised of both of these lines. We have a match line here that matches up with the end of the building here, just as the west elevation does the same. Uh, the, both the east and west elevations include loading bays. Um, and uh, uh, the maximum height of the building is uh, forecast to be 41 plus or minus feet, which includes a parapet to shield roof-mounted mechanical items. Included within the development plan is a guardhouse to be located on the northwest corner of the development. Uh, building plan and elevations have been provided for this approximately 88 square foot building. Uh, items of interest for this petition, uh, the project will require development of an offsite water line. The petitioner is working with the town of Whitestown on this item. Uh, there were reported zoning commitments uh, when this property was rezoned to the I-1 classification that was done under docket 202008-Z. The rezoning commitments um, based upon the, the proposal presented tonight have are complied with. Uh, everything has been met. Landscaping, and I'm going to back up to landscaping and, and I know that the petitioner has a presentation they're gonna be sharing. Their slide of landscaping is much better than this one because it has color, so it would be much more descriptive. But the landscaping that uh, the petitioner is providing along State Road 267 actually exceeds what is required. Um, there, was a, there was a discussion with staff during the process that, that uh, we were hoping that they could provide more in an effort to uh, screen as best possible a 1.1 million square foot building. And uh, we appreciate their efforts to, to do that by enhancing the landscaping. Uh, staff's position is favorable for a conditional approval of both petitions, as there are still some items to be addressed in the, in the comment letters. Uh, we even had a uh, conference call with the petitioner this afternoon to discuss the remaining items in the comment letters, which have been provided to you. Uh, while the letters may initially uh, on your, your review appear somewhat lengthy, we covered every item today, and many of the items are just a matter of we need to verify this item has been adequately or properly addressed within the materials. Uh, DPW was on the phone call with us. No one expressed any concerns about any of the remaining items. We believe that these will be able to re be resolved. So again, that is why staff is uh, recommending a conditional approval of the petitions, just an opportunity to, to finish crossing those T's and dotting those last I's. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. At this time, petitioner like to present. Mr. President, members of the commission, my name is uh, Matt Price uh, here on behalf of the petitioner. I have an address of 10 West Market Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, Mr. Kilmer did an excellent job of providing an overview. Uh, just to provide maybe a little bit more background uh, before I hand over uh, to Brian uh, Sheward to take you through the plans and some of the specifics that Mr. Kilmer alluded to. This project was, or property was originally rezoned back in 2020. It was one of the uh, first matters that was uh, uh, considered uh, when we went into lockdown and kind of uh, moved to a remote platform for a little while, or virtual platform for a little while. And uh, the project lead, uh, Amy Zepka, uh, is here with me tonight. Uh, she was uh, here from that from the very beginning and has worked very uh, diligently to bring uh, this project to fruition. Um, as you are familiar with other similar projects along the I-65 corridor, many of these uh, facilities are built on a speculative basis, meaning that the buildings are constructed and available for leasing before a uh, tenant is really known. And there's reasons for that that operate in the marketplace. 
this is not one of those uh, occasions. Uh, this uh, particular property was part uh, of a competitive proposal uh, to secure uh, Subaru uh, as the uh, tenant. And uh, so that company is going to be uh, subject to approval, obviously uh, seeking to expand its footprint here in Indiana and in particular uh, here in Boone County. So it's a very exciting opportunity and one that uh, uh, is, is not speculative uh, in nature. Uh, Brian, Amy and I and our development team are all available to answer any questions that you have, but I think I'll turn it over to Brian to take you through the plans. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, Brian Short, Kimley Horn Associates, Civil Engineer. Our offices are two for 500 East, 96th Street, Suite 300. We just moved uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, as always, Roger gave a, a great overview. So I've got some slides that I can slide through here. Um, I will try to keep this brief because he did hit on, I think, the, the main points. Um, but again, the project site, uh, northwest corner of 550 and State Road 267, you can see that it's three properties today. And essentially, we're combining those three into one lot. And then we're splitting it again to give a, a right of half right of way dedication along 267 and a half right of way along County Road uh, 550. So one parcel, two right of ways is what we're proposing. Uh, in summary, it's uh, the total site's about 76 acres. Um, again, it's zoned I-1, three parcels today. We're proposing one parcel with two right-of-ways. Um, approximately 1.1 million square feet, just a shade under 50 feet in height. And the automotive parking and trailer parking are noted there uh, with, with additional futures, as, as Roger had mentioned. Site plan, um, north is to the right. You can see the yellow arrow. Uh, this helps, I think, a little bit see where the ponds are located. There's three of them, as, as Roderick mentioned. Um, and the, the tan in the middle is the footprint of the building. You can see there's docks on the east and west sides. And the two curb cuts, uh, one, one thing I did want to mention, the curb cuts are situated directly across from the curb cuts on the other side of the road. That was intentional. Um, less important on the north because of the median that's in the middle of the road, um, because it's a right in, right out. But certainly the middle or I could say the southern entrance uh, lines up with, I think it's called Performance Way on the east side of the road. Um, going on, so point of access, as mentioned, the guardhouse is on that northwest corner. And then the red line, I just wanted to highlight this, this is a Subaru need, but to have a secure court, which means there's a chain link uh, vinyl, chain link fence that is a security fence that wraps all the way around as you see in red. Um, which essentially means inside that red area, it's for their own security. Um, so as, as vehicles enter, and we believe the vast majority of, of both uh, cars and trucks will likely come from the north, they would enter um, here on the south, or I'm sorry, northeast corner, come across the north, which you can see is quite a bit of space to queue. Um, and then they come around the corner and would stop at the guardhouse, enter, and then they could either access docks on the west side or wrap all the way around the site. To this side, you'll notice this circle here, that's for truck turn, turn around if needed. And then they can go all the way back around, come back out the same place they came, wrap this direction. And then at this point, they would have a decision if they were trying to go north back to 65 via 267, they would make a right internal, come out at this full access point, wait their turn, and then pull out to go northbound. Um, so we believe that would be likely the predominant uh, truck trip, especially knowing that there are facilities up in uh, the Lafayette area. So I, and one thing not mentioned, I think the, the intent of this building is largely a distribution warehouse. So it's parts um, that are going to be in racks basically inside the, the facility. Um, as mentioned, uh, there was a, a lot of time spent getting the buffer yards right on this one um, because of the commitments that were previously made. Uh, you can see there are multiple different types of buffer yards and widths on all sides of the site. I'm just highlighting that that's the uh, we're meeting the intent, as Roger had had noted. Um, and in fact, I guess I could note the commitments had actually called for a lower buffer yard along 267 originally. After looking at it further and seeing that it wasn't necessarily based on the use across the street, it was based on the street. The buffer yard was elevated along the east side of the property. So as mentioned. This exceeds kind of what the original intent was in the in the commitments originally, and that's largely to help. Um, well, we're meeting the ordinance, but it's largely to help with the fact that uh, you know just doing our best to screen um, a, a large building off the side of the road. Um, 
Roger briefly touched on this, but we are being served water and sewer from Whitestown. So uh, a major benefit to the area is we will be extending a water main, a 12 inch water main from Perry Boulevard to the north, down the east side of 267 underneath the creek, crossing under 267, which you can see here, running along the edge and then running in a 20 foot easement all the way across to this point, which is at our, our southern entrance, and then crossing back under 267 to connect to an existing water main that was installed by Becknell with their development. So today there's a dead end water main at the end of the Becknell development. This project will complete a loop which should help pressures and flows in the entire area. Um, worked with Danny. I think the, the last remaining comment he has is to move a valve to the other side of a hydrant and resubmit. So we're, we're all but uh, final with him at this point. Um, and then sanitary, there's uh, an existing gravity sanitary manhole on the east side of 267, just north of there of the current um, entrance here. It's at a depth that requires us to have an on-site private sanitary lift station, meaning it's not Whitestown's to maintain. It'll be the um, owner, but we'll have a, a lift station here on our side of the street and a force main, three-inch force main to run underneath 267 and connect to that manhole. We have will serves from both Whitestown uh, for both sanitary and, and water. And then lastly, the storm outfall um, will come out of this pond and this, this red line here, and it will connect or not connect, but it'll discharge next to an existing culvert that was installed and designed to receive um, undetained field flow from the field that's out there today, which is actually a higher flow today during a 10 or 100 year storm than what this would see in a developed condition because there's no ponds out there today. So we're basically reducing the amount of flow that's coming across the road once we develop this. Um, as mentioned, we did attend the drainage board meeting yesterday morning and received two approvals. One was approval on the, the project in general, but then also approval from uh, the Boone County Surveyor's Office and Drainage Board for the legal drain relocation as mentioned in that upper northwest corner of the site. In this graphic north is true north is up. Um, you can see there's a, a significant amount of field area that follows that legal drain tile through the corner, just the clip corner of the site. And that's why, as Roger mentioned, we have what we call compensatory storage to make up for um, some fill in the floodplain that encroaches onto the property. And we do it at a three to one ratio, which is the ordinance requirement. And that's that was met. So we received our approval. Um, primary plat, sometimes it's helpful to color these. Uh, the drainage easements are in light blue. Yellow, as you can see along 550, as well as 267 are the right-of-way dedications that we're proposing. That'll end up being a 230-foot wide right-of-way along 267's significant right-of-way um, with the intent for the Ronald Reagan Parkway to come up and likely run this path. That's, that's purposeful on how wide it is. And then in the northwest corner, as mentioned, uh, the county surveyor allows us to reduce the 150-foot statutory legal drain easement down to 30 and call it an urban-regulated drainage easement. And that's what we're doing in the northwest corner. Um, as mentioned, uh, one thing is we can't have any light poles or wall packs more than 20 foot in height. We're not. We're meeting that with our current plan. Um, we also have 0.0-foot candles around the perimeter property line, which is what, what you want to see. Um, landscaping. We're meeting that. We talked about that. Um, one interesting note is the commitment number four had said uh, the development shall comply with the submitted site plan with regard to buffer areas. However, the number and size of buildings and number and orientation of drive aisles, parking spaces, and access drives may be revised and established during the development plan review. So that's essentially exactly what's happened here is the plan. Um, and then the last one is screening of dumpsters, which we're doing. But the original plan at the time of rezone, if you recall, was this a two building scenario north is to the right obviously we're one building oriented north south but we are abiding by all the buffering which was what the commitment required us to do architecture this is a little bit easier to see as a zoom in of the office corner you can see the glass and the different architectural features and um, uh, representative from cso is here if there's a question about architecture and then lastly this is, gives you a real life, I guess, perspective on what that office corner would look like um, with the glass glazing and entry points. So at this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions, um, but thank you. All right, thank you. At this point, is there anybody in the public like to speak on this matter? Online? 
All right. Then I guess open up to the members of the Planning Commission. Who provides fire services to this building? That, that will be Zionsville Fire Department. And they have reviewed this as part of the TAC review and the ongoing review. And, uh, um, you know, I, I know that there were no, their review letter was not included in your packet, but I know that uh, they have signed off on this and they do not have any concerns regarding, regarding the status of this. And in fact, on June 6th, we received a letter from the fire marshal who's letting us know that the updates to the site in the 267 corridor were acceptable to him. Uh, he simply, simply wants uh, fire hydrants to be called out in a different color so we can see it better. Uh, and same thing with the fire pump loop. So he's really just looking for color changes so his eye goes to that quicker. No concerns from the fire marshal. And I'll say, Mr. Hurst, the, this is one of those scenarios where Whitestown provides the service and then Zionsville responds to the fire. It's similar to the Sunbeam building. I, that, I live in Perry Township, but yeah. I know our fire station down there was not going to be the one for <laughs> service against. So we, yeah. So thank you for that. But right. So it, there's always a little bit of coordination between Danny Powers Public Works at Whitestown and, and Zionsville Fire, but they've done it a few times on these bigger buildings. And I think they've got it figured out at this point. Go ahead, Roger. There's one item that, that I failed to mention in the report and we haven't touched upon yet. And that is the petitioner has provided uh, some draft commitments for consideration, uh, specifically regarding the pathway along uh, County Road 550 South. Hard copy of those uh, draft commitments were provided to you and waiting for your, your seat this evening when you, when you arrived. Um, so I don't know if the, the petitioner has any additional comments they'd like to provide regarding those proposed commitments. I think, um, Matt, you can speak to it if you need to, but I think the idea is that at, at such a time, the County Road 550 is, is improved, which it's not proposed to be because we don't have any curb cuts planned along 550, that we would install um, sidewalk or, or walking path, whatever needs to be there. Installing it now would likely sit and effectively not connect to anything until that, until that would happen. They'd probably get destroyed at the time you'd build the road improvements in the future, to be honest, so. And town staff is comfortable with the commitment. Would they prefer the commitment over the going ahead and building the sidewalk? We, we are fine with the proposed commitment. We, we would suggest, though, that you incorporate the adoption of that. And should you make a motion to approve that that be included in the motion? Any other questions, comments? If not, is there a motion on the primary plat? The commitment should be incorporated into both or just the primary plat? Put them in both? As far as the commitments yeah. to the primary plat is fine. Okay. All right. That's where I put it to. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty big deal. Somebody like to make a motion? Gonna, let me make sure I understood that we're going to do the primary plot first. Right. We're going to do them both, just primary plot. Primary plot first and incorporate the commitments. Okay, well, let's see if Sharon can get this done. I move that docket number 2023-18-PP, a petition for primary plot approval to establish a single lot of 76.12 plus or minus acres with ROW dedicated being zoned rural light industrial, rural I 1B, conditionally approved subject to the resolution of the comments noted in the attached comment letters 6A 
and 6D. And, su and subject to the commitments that have been offered by the petitioner. Okay, subject to the commitments that have been offered by the petitioner. Okay, was there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. Motion carries 6 0. Primary box approved. Is there a motion on the development plan? <clears throat> I'll take a crack at it. <laughs> I move that petition number 2023-19-DP development plan petition for a 1,100,000 plus or minus square foot industrial distribution warehouse with related vehicle and trailer parking areas on a 76.12 plus or minus acre site being in the rural light industrial rural one I, excuse me, I-1, District B, conditionally approved based upon the findings of fact as presented with conditions as noted in the staff report and subject to resolution of comments within the attached comment letters, Exhibit 6A to 6D. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed by nay. That motion also carried. The plan is approved. Thank you very, very much. much. Mike, would you like to speak on form based code? Yes. The, uh, the consultant uh, for the town, McKenna Associates, is completing final edits on the draft form based code. We expect to get that in about a week, maybe hopefully last week by the end of this week, uh, at which point we will release that to the public. Uh, they can access the public, will be able to access the new form based code. Uh, online, either uh, and on the, um, the the consultant's web page, uh, and or the town web page, we'll link to the okay. the the, uh, the consultant's website. Um, we have a special meeting scheduled with the planning commission next Wednesday uh, at six thirty p.m. Um, at which time McKenna Associates will be here to present to you the code and summarize its contents for you and respond to your questions and comments if you have any um, at that meeting. The, really the intent of next week's meeting is really to, to get it in your hands, summarize it for you, introduce it to you, respond and respond to your initial comments. Um, at that point, there, there may be members of the audience who wish to speak, that's entirely up to you. If you wish to take questions, it's not a hearing, it is just a, simply a public meeting of the Planning Commission. So uh, you are welcome to take the questions, but you're not obligated to, it just being a public meeting. Um, also, at this meeting next week, you can decide on the next course of action, uh, whether you would like to table the matter or if you would like to schedule it for another meeting, whether that be a public meeting or a hearing in July. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.